EA Sports, and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. From Whistling Straits Golf Course on the shores of Lake Michigan, live second-round coverage of the Kohler Open. But if we see more of what we witnessed yesterday, we're in for a heck of a battle these next three days as we show you the current leaderboard here on this Friday. Austin Cook is your leader. He's at nine under. As for our featured golfer, it's gonna take a good round to make the weekend as they enter one stroke below the projected number. Yeah, that's a beauty there to get this second round underway. Second shot straight ahead, and we go to Iona Steven. Hi, Rich. It's great to be here. We are in for an adventurous ride today, the backdrop of Blue Lake, Michigan. But finding the short grass, the fairway, one of the hardest things to do around here, so we're off to a promising start. Ah, it's just a touch too long. I mean, personally, I'd rather be putting back up the hill than coming down. It's pretty quick. Oh, how good a read is that? It is a birdie at the opening hole. And following the opening 69, he'll get it to one under for his round here. Frank, how about the par five, 597 yard second hole? They give you a chance here. If you can hit a long drive down the left side, it starts to open up. But even a drive that finds the fairway down the right side, you might think it's okay, but chances are you can have a blind second shot. That one gonna be in great shape. So following the birdie at one, a solid drive here at the second. Second shot straight ahead and we go to Iona Steven. And it's a long and slender hole, very challenging and being on the right hand side makes it even more so. We're looking at a blind second shot with that pop bunker just 35 yards short of the green, making it even more tough. That's what he wanted to do. After the tee shot, puts himself in really good position here on the par five. Yep, played that nicely. That'll work out just fine. It's about a 60% make percentage from here. This for birdie. Yes, can't ask for a better start to a round than this. It is back-to-back -back birdies at one and two. And he moves to two under for his round and minus five overall. Now the stunning 188-yard par 3 third here at Whistling Straits. Yeah, the green angles to left, you have to be careful because it's well protected by those huge bunkers and dunes on the left. Okay, that's the area of the green you want to be in, that front right quadrant, and it's a birdie opportunity coming up. We welcome in Iona Steven. This, a putt for birdie. 
It's a combination of brake and speed demanded with this putt. Right to left down a steep slope. Got to be careful. Oh, that is so nicely judged from that far away. That required a lot of touch down the slope. Well done. Nicely done. It is a par here at the third. And he'll stay at five under. Well, here we are at the par four fourth. It's a shade under 500 yards, and it is the hardest hole on the golf course. Why? Well, Pete Dye's playing mind games yet again. He's trying to get you to avoid those mounds on the right side. You do, and what happens is so many tee shots go toward those left bunkers and the dunes that fall dangerously toward Lake Michigan. Again, mind games from the mastermind, Pete Dye. No problems there. That's going to wind up safely in the fairway. From the fairway, Iona, this is second. And the fourth year at Whistling Straits, it's challenging enough. You just have to find the fairway. That's what we've done here. So still a chance of making a par or better. Here we go, this one for birdie. Not that time, pretty good effort, but it'll wander a couple of feet by. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four, and he'll remain right where he is. Ready to tee off here at the fifth. It is a 603-yard snaking par five. Yeah, really, there's no way you can carry that water on the right side. 340 yards finds the field on that line, so that's not really worth it. Ideally, just hit it down the left side. Take your medicine. What a great tee shot. Bisected the fairway beautifully. Iona a second coming up. And it's a smart play to take it down the left hand side here at the fifth hole. And most likely we're looking at three shots from here on in. Almost a great shot, just missed it a fraction to the right of this green here at the par five. Yeah, but a chip and a puck, still make four. A great opportunity here for Birdie.
Nicely played. It's a birdie at the fifth. And that's going to move him to six under par. Ready to hit the tee shot here at the sixth. Frank, where are you looking to land the ball off the tee here? Well, Rich finally uh, a par four that's not overly long. There's a little bunker down the left. That's about 250 yards. Shouldn't have a problem carrying that. But it's the next two, just up ahead around the 330 mark. Just keep it a little short of that. Short iron in. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. From the fairway, Iona, this is second. Yeah, and this sixth hole is the shortest on the front line, known as Gremlin's Ear. That's because of the unique shape of this green. Thankfully, the pin today is in the front portion. Definitely more accessible, but beware of those bunkers short right. Okay, sensible play right there, and that one on deck. Mm, good effort, but that'll run two, three feet past the hole. Safely in for par here at the sixth. And he'll remain three shots off the pace. Frank, there's a good reason they call this seventh hole shipwreck. It's 221 yards long, and there is plenty of trouble to the right. Yeah, water, rocks, bunkers, all sorts of things. But really, when you look at the hole another way, it shapes up for a left to right shot. That was obviously well struck, but it came in a little too hot, and that one's going to run out and leave him a much longer birdie putt than he would have hoped for. Yeah, he had a pretty good run at that, but it won't go down. Still pretty good from there. Yep, well done. That's in for par here at seven. And he'll remain at six under par. This one have enough going on for you. 506 yards, and it's a par for this eighth hole. Count them. There are more than 100 bunkers on this hole. So what you need to do is favor the left side because if you don't, there is that steep drop off right into Lake Michigan, all those dunes, all those bunkers on the right. Focus, focus. He just keeps motoring right along. Another good tee shot right there. So a breeze at his back as he readies his second to the par four.
just think about it. You, you've got to cover nearly two football fields of distance and get it inside five feet. You wouldn't think that's possible. Okay, nicely done. It's a birdie at number eight. And he'll get it now to four under par. Just two shots off the lead. We finish up the front side here at Whistling Straits with the 442-yard par four ninth. Fairway tends to funnel the tee shot toward the middle, but if you're too far to the right, a large tree about 100 yards short of the green could block your approach. And this a tee shot that fits the eye, and that'll be just fine. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. 118 yards to the hole, coming off a birdie at the previous hole, looking to go back to back. club more there as it is needs to get up and down to save par Just a bit, and it stayed out wide left of the hole. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And he's going to fall to three shots off the lead. Starting off the backside with a 391 yard par 4 tent. Best to try and hug the left side of the fairway. You have to avoid the deep bunker on the right which demands a 240-yard carry. That one up the right side. They've all been going straight up until that one. A little bit of a test coming up. So a poor tee shot at 10, now his second. Oh, that was a good strike. Took it straight at it, too, that one bounce and check. Well played. Well done there. It's a birdie to kick off the back nine. And he's going to move to within two shots of the lead. Perfect striking range for the weekend. We're now at the 11th hole, and this is a huge par five. 645 yards, Frank. That's a biggie. And plus, this hole bends to the right, which sort of makes you think that you can hit it down the right side. But if you miss down the right, there's just a multitude of bunkers that'll swallow up that ball, and you're nearly guaranteed to make at least six. A 
looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend in that. Another good drive here. Now from just under 300 yards, a second from the fairway at the par five. Has to be thrilled with that second shot here to the par five. Frank got everything out of that. Yeah, did well just to advance the ball so far down the fairway. And now a fairly straightforward third shot. <laughs> Gonna have to give this a pretty good thump. Uh, just too tough to control out of the sand. That one unable to hold the green. It'll run off into the short stuff. Gained a stroke at the last and going to give at least one back right now. Cleans that up in the hole. Up next, it is the number 18 handicap hole, but don't be fooled. The 163-yard par 312 has the most challenging green at Whistling Straits. And I think he expected a little more help from that win. This ball doesn't even get there. Now chipping up to the putting surface for this, his second shot. Well, those are the shots that turn what you'd like to be a leisurely stroll out on the golf course into a day of hard work. Yeah, what could have been a tap in is now gonna be a grind. Ah, nearly had it. Just going to wander a foot or so by. So, a tough hole. That's in for bogey at 12. And he'll fall back to five under. Frank here at the 13th. A lot can happen. Just a gentle dog leg to the right, or at least the hole moves to the right. Plus the slope of the fairway. So you've got to aim left of center. Smoke that drive. A little unlucky, actually, to get into the first cut. So now from that first cut, he is second to the par four.
This could be a good one. I always looked inside that 15 feet circle. Anything inside that was going to be a good shot. So in my book, that's a good shot. Oh my, that singes the right edge, but doesn't go down. He'll finish that one off with no problem. It's in for par. And that's going to be good enough to keep him just inside the cut line here in round two. Now to the par four 14th. It is a dog leg left, about 396 yards. Yeah, it really narrows up around that 300-yard mark. So this is another hole, really, where you don't need a driver. But somehow you've got to get that ball in the fairway. Remember, 250 yards, I think it leaves 145 in. Well, you can't walk out and drop it any better than that. That is a fine tee shot right there. Pin tucked in the back right here as he readies his second. That's a head scratcher. That approach shot from uh, relatively close in. I would have been looking at 10 to 15 feet. And that will come up well short, not gauged well at all. Safely in, it's a bogey here at 14. And that's going to drop him back to four under par. Ready to go here at the 15th team. By the looks of it, Frank, we should have brought the swimsuits and some sunscreen. It's very picturesque, that's for sure, but don't get fooled by its beauty. This is an absolute beast at 503 yards and sets up a very, very tough finish to whistling strikes. That is dead center right down the middle here to start the hole. Just think about it. You, you've got to cover nearly two football fields of distance and get it inside five feet. You wouldn't think that's possible. Ah, yes, never in doubt. It's a birdie here at 15. And that could be an important one as he'll move a couple shots clear of the cut line. Onward now to the shortest par five at Whistling Straits, the 16th at 568 yards. It's reachable in two, but there are plenty of dunes and bunkers that can steal your glory.
that is straight into the thick stuff. Well, that's really a good job right there to advance that ball down the fairway. That came out pretty clean, Frank. Yeah, clean as a whistle, and now actually in great shape in this par five. That's a decent sized green. It's not bad, just a little past the halt. A birdie putt now at 16. And players of this caliber should make this on a regular basis pretty flat with just a slight movement to the left. That one just gonna sneak on by. Okay, that'll be a par here at 16. He'll stay right where he is. Frank, the 17th hole. I don't like the sound of it. It's called pinched nerve. And I'm not sure I like the look of it. 249 yards, all sorts of trouble to the left. Well, trouble to the left, there are some 20 feet below the level of the green. So that's a no-go zone. And then, of course, on the right, there's a huge mound, the sand dune there, with a bunker in it. Um, that sort of makes you hit that tee shot a little further left. But believe me, there is a little bit of green in between both. And that's certainly not what you have in mind standing on the tee box. That never had a chance of hitting the green. No problems there. That's a par here at 17. And he'll remain right where he is. The final hole, the 18th, and the clubhouse in the distance. Frank, it's looking like home sweet home, isn't it? Well, if you can hit the fairway here, that's one thing, but it still leaves an enormously long second shot. No issues here, that is into the fairway. Frank, this approach to 18, it will test you in every way. Yeah, even off a good tee shot, it's a difficult second. And uh, this is one that you really have to think, perhaps maybe hitting that second shot a little right of center.
Frank landed it on the green. It was never going to stop. No, no chance. Well, obviously that's not his best, but it'll be quickly forgotten, Frank, if he's able to get out of here with his par. Well, you might forget it. I won't. <laughs> Far from his best. Oh, well, you hate to give one back on a putt like that. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And that won't help the cause one bit. Frank, that was quite a test at Whistling Straits. Well, 7,800 yards is one of the longest courses you can play. But uh, this golf course extracts every single ounce of game out of you. Frank, it certainly was a challenge. For my partner, Frank Nobolo, and all of us here at EA Sports, we say so long for now from Whistling Straits.